Hey guys, back again. So, last time we... Well, a long time ago. We did the register for this node application. Okay, so here I am. And now we're going to take a look at the login process. Okay, so first of all, let's see what we have in the browser. So this is... um. What we have so far, nothing too interesting, but we already have the register, the tables are set, so we can um, add users and we can authenticate them. Well, we will be able to authenticate them to log in after this video, so let's do that. At this point, I should have this out login. Okay, remember that we did all the routes, so we have this uh, out login. Is this the one that. Yeah, it's going to say response that render. Let me just make this bigger. So it's going to render the view that we have here. Let me see, okay, login. And you can see that it's a simple form. This is book, of course, that's why you see the indentations. And we're extending the layout, and this uh, specific block is the content. So, this is the token handler. We will take a look at this later that will allow us to validate and authenticate the user. Right now, we don't need that at this point. So, let's actually start with this login. So, at this moment, let me use F12 there. Uh, no, I don't want that. Okay, so I can type anything I want. Submit and it's going to just uh, submit the form. And it's going to say login. So, yeah, it's just going to send the word login. Okay. <clears throat> so, let me just see. Sorry, I'm a little is sick just a simple cold <laughs> nothing to worry about so uh, let's go to okay so we have the login let me just remove this so we can start with this remember that at this point uh, we have Molter so all the requests are passing through Molter so we will need to get that function working using Molter okay so there's another way, if I remember correctly, uh, that we can use the uh, the JSON. I can't remember the freaking function, sorry guys. But uh, we will see that later once we rebuild this section in a different um, course, of course, <laughs> and to see how to add a authentication using Passport. Okay, So you will see how we handle the login. The register is going to be kind of the same. Okay. But the login is going to be different on that um, that course. So right now we are just going to say users upload because that is the multer function that is getting the request, the response, and we will need to make this an async function. Okay. We're going to expect an error or pass an error, and we're going to say if error with this um, request also that log error okay you can return that too if you want and from here I have a console let's say console that log models why do I have that it's been a while since I recorded anything about this so this is a February 22nd so this is my birthday my birthday so <laughs> I have some time to record something so let's just do that so oh, let me just go back to the form and I haven't touched Node.js in a long time so in my current job I'm working with everything except uh, the things that I learned you know so it's um sometimes it's a pain in the butt but yeah, 
uh, well, that is how things are. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for the password. Let's see, submit. Uh, let's see what happens. It's not going to return anything, but it's going to console the post and the name of the post and the user. Okay, so it's going to do that twice. Um, I can't remember why it's doing twice. Maybe because it's looping through those uh, models. But that is uh, nothing uh, that we need to worry about. So, I just wanted to see why we had that, what I had that console and log. So, let's keep moving. So, constant, okay, if I can type correctly, constant user and user error. So I think we will need to set this function because I don't think I have this handler. So this is a handle. No, token handler, no. Okay, no, that's not good. No, I don't want that. What the fuck is going on? Handle. Okay. If I do that, okay. So this is a function that I have used before with Node.js and um, let me just see, we should have that in the library. Uh, and storage? No, we don't have that. Let me just check my other um, project. I'm trying to find that freaking folder, okay. Okay, yeah, we will need this uh, promise handler, so let's make this one. Promise um, handler. Handler at JS. What the hell? Why I did I change? Okay, but uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Promise handle that yes. So we will say constant constant handle. So it's going to take a promise, okay, and we're going to do something. So this is going to return us or the data or the error, okay, from a given promise. So we're going to say return promise. This is a nice way to handle all your um, your promises, your awaits, okay, because it's going to either return you or the data or the error, and you can just make this de um, deconstructing. Let me just show you. Saying, okay, uh, the data is going to be the user and the error is going to be the user error. So we can check for any of those to see if they exist and um, work according to that. Then we're going to receive or pass a data, we'll receive a data and if data, okay, we're going to, if a uh, after this, then we receive the data. Okay, if the data is there, then we're going to say data and we're going to say the error as undefined. Okay, so remember, we're returning this data and the error. Okay, so this is a structure on which this is going to be set. So the data in this case is returning, okay, in this then, and the error is going to be set to undefined. I hope this um, you can understand a little bit of what I'm doing. And if there's an error, okay, so this will trigger when we have the correct answer, okay, when we return something or when the promise returns something. Now, if there's an error, then we're going to return a promise like this, but a promise with the resolve in the data as undefined or oh, undefined and the error as error okay so each time one of these is going to be populated okay or the data or the error and we're going to say model data exports equals handle so we just um, export the handle this function so we can use it on this our controller so right now we will need to uh, import this okay let me just copy that import let me just okay do i have that already 
No, I don't. And paste that. So constant handler require from libraries, we're going to require this promise handler, which is going to be stored in this handle. And because that is a function, we can just say handle. Okay, let me scroll all the way back there, okay, to logins. Remember that it's going to take a um, promise. So we're going to pass this models that user, okay, remember that we can access the user using the models. Find one, okay, so we're going to look for the user where the user or the email inside this request body email we need a comma there include the model which is Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. So we're going to say something. We're going to say, okay, um, hey, handler, just take this promise, okay, the user find one, and check if what we're getting is um, the same as the request body email. But we want to include something in this request. We want to include the model or the relationship it has with the posts. So we're going to say models that post okay so that is what is going on so this is the promise okay and we're going to check if the user that is giving the email is the same as the email that we have stored and if we get that then we're going to um, include to the response the post the user has and we can check here if um, user error Response to the status. Oh, it's so easy with not uh, with not and express how to work with these things. I've been working with Laravel and all that, and although it's similar, I feel better working with uh, Node.js. You know. Okay, that wasn't supposed to happen. Okay. Let me just build this again, just like that. Okay, and so we're going to say if the user error exists, remember that if we have an error, let's go to the promise handler again, then we're going to return the error and the data as undefined. Okay. Um, okay. So we're going to say error. We're going to send uh, something. I think I already showed you how to receive all this. Why I'm doing backticks. I don't know because this is just a simple string, but we can pass that. Doesn't matter anyways. So we're going to say error reaching the user. Please try again. We are not going to give anything else. Uh, we don't want to make assumptions or for this person that is trying the email and password to get any assumption of or suggestion of what is going on, of why he wasn't able to enter. If the user is the real user, then he would know why and if the user is not the real user then he would not know why he is not able to okay so that is the um, why we are doing this uh, obscuring of the um, error handling so user if we get the user then we're going to say response oh sorry i was looking at the wrong stuff let me just scroll back scroll down sorry so i can see just the piece of code that i want to use so let password equals to the request that body that uh, password okay we have semicolons there and let user hash equals to user that remember we're hashing the um the password so we're not storing the string that is the password in the database we're storing the hash so if anyone steals the database then he will only get the names the emails 
But the important part that is the password, you can also try to hash the emails. So you will do something similar to what you have uh, with the password here. Um, but I haven't seen um, I haven't seen that done too much. So I'm not sure if that is a practice because I, I haven't checked that. So, but you can do that if you want. If you want to um, hash all your stuff in the database. Of course, you will need more power to retrieve that, but um, and more code, but it's possible to do that. So we're going to return the data values, that password, the password that is inside the data of the user. Okay. In this case, it's just the hash. And we're going to say bcrypt. So it's time to uh, decrypt the, the hash. We're going to compare the password that we have using this email, okay? I mean, using this password that is coming from the request body. This is just a plain text password that, you, that the user types inside the form. So password and user hash. Error. And success if success responsible status okay so I wanna um sorry if not success okay response status status 500 an internal server error and we're going to render the form again the login view and we're going to say this error is um there was an error let me just copy that text <clears throat> oh sorry this is Oh yeah, yeah. So we're checking at this point inside the form. Um, after we are um, after user type the values and they are coming in. So if uh, the compare didn't success, then we're going to return a five hundred internal server error and the. The text there was an error processing the request. Okay, remember we are not going to give any information back. Uh, we cannot assume this is the real user. Okay, as I said, if the real user is there, then he would be able to to. And this is something why I don't like to block the intents because sometimes a user can forget the password. Okay, and he can try. Uh, maybe let's give it. Maybe 20 shots, okay? Uh, at most, they will try uh, or they will need, what, 10? I have often uh, forgotten my passwords and I have to try to remember what I'm typing. So if you block that, then you're going to, um, you know, your user won't be able to, to get uh, where he wants, okay? Won't be able to log in. So it's okay-ish to block the intents, okay? And, uh, but, I mean, but um, give them enough tries. So for example, my bank has uh, only three intents to um, pass my password, okay? If I fuck that up those three times, then uh, I'm blocked from maybe, I think it's uh, 24 hours and they are going to send an email with that a uh, blocking someone tried to you know to enter your account and it was blocked uh, from this um, device and all that stuff no but um that in that case is uh, correct but in this case is that it's just a post um, thing uh, or a social stuff there's no need to block all that or at this case just give them 10 15 shots or maybe just 10 shots 
so uh, they can try to remember what the hell uh, is their password so in this case we're just going to return and there was an error processing the password okay assuming um, assuming whatever we want actually and else okay so we're going to say storage remember we have this storage that is something like it uh, was um, like um, react.js was with this set state token and i'm using this one i think i, I mentioned this i'm using this one because um, i have several videos uh, on react.js and it seems that people liked a uh, react.js more than angular and Vue.js. so that's why i try to kind of mix this up so if you understand a little bit of react then um, you will be able to kind of understand what is going on with this um, state and passing the token so it's going to be better for you to understand so we're going to say token json web token that sign so uh, if the user um, or the validation the password was correct we're going to say we're going to sign a new token so user request that body email so we're going to use something the user has so let's use his email and um, we're going to use super secret word so this is the password you should have this inside an environment variable okay but for this um, demonstration it's not uh, really hard to make an environment maybe we will do that at the end so you can see how this works but i just don't want to add we have a ton of files so i don't want to add another file right now so you can just focus on whatever we're doing and we're going to say expires in let's say two hours so this token is going to allow the user to log in um, for two hours okay and we can add a comma here and remember that we're storing this token inside the state inside this token hand not token handler sorry inside the um, let me see where the hell this is um no nope, this is the actual library let me just look at this i can't remember where that okay it's the json so we're going to store this okay um token inside this in this same a uh, way so we need now the user and user that data values which is all the values um that the user has lol that's so fucking loud okay and user that post so we're going to post we're going to post no we're going to map through all the posts this p as post and we're going to say oh, we can console a lot i am just console log. Blah, 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 blah. sorry i'm just consoling con no cons is this okay no. <laughs> my brain just died there for <laughs> five seconds data values i'm just so fucking tired guys sorry been a, a long couple of weeks and hopefully this will be the last week for that project and i'm just wishing for that to to end so oh, we can console this too console.log storage Although we can see the change inside the file itself, so let's not just console that. And we can respond with the status 200 because everything went right. And we can redirect to the to the uh, main route. Okay, you can redirect here to wherever you want. So uh, let me just save this. Okay, that's so freaking loud. And uh, so let's go back precision working okay so i can remember my password so let's say one two three four five six seven i think that is what i'm using 
submit cannot read property email of a uh, undefined let me just check that sorry it's not response it's request body email and that seems to be the only one request body okay so let's go back i will recap in a bit guys so don't worry about that i still don't have anything there for the logout we will do that later so i think i'm just going to um record this login stuff today and maybe at night or i don't know i will record the okay let me just give me a second the logout is okay the logout should be just um okay we can deal with that i think in this video so if this works of course if this works we will deal with the logout one two three four five six seven submit okay so it uh, seems everything went right and um okay this is all data and let me just go to um state json mm. It doesn't say the date, but it changed the ID to the ID number one. We had the, I think the John Doe, or I can remember the, the name. So let's try that again. Now with the um, logouts, let's just deal with the logout right away. So let's take a look at this. Okay, I don't know why I minimized that. Okay. So we have already the logout. So what we're going to do here let's just remove this so we're going to say storage if i can freaking type storage that set the state mm -mm -mm. okay and we say token the token is going to be nothing and the user is going to be another empty string okay and we're going to say response redirect to auth yeah like that auth and login okay so we are going to redirect the user to the login sorry guys that thing is so freaking loud so sorry if that is bothering you damn maybe my volume is too high no it's 31 so let me just okay maybe it's too high uh, the mic should sound uh, correctly yeah seems to yeah i think this shouldn't affect the mic i don't know why i'm talking about that so response redirect our login okay so that should be fine let's just save this okay that is not that loud and let's refresh and say logout and you can see we got redirected and let's take a look at the token in case that did something set the state and you can see we have this token and this user just as empty um, strings okay so in this case we cannot access now at valid token so the, this token is not valid because it's not existent and the user is not valid because it's not existent uh, as well so let's say one two three four five six and seven submit and uh, we get redirected okay log out okay i was checking this button but we don't well not button but um anchor but it's not working i haven't said that okay let me just do this one two three four five let's say one two four five and what happens okay okay we don't see any error because i'm not displaying that but uh, we got redirected back we got this a um, form render again so one two three four five six seven submit and let me just take a look at this and you can see our state is having this a uh, token back so this is something similar to what happens in the browser when you have the a uh, valid token so we store the token somewhere okay uh, usually inside the um, you can you can even store this inside the index tv so usually it's on the session or on the um, local storage okay that is where uh, most people place it so 
Yeah, or you can have that in a cookie as well. Depends on um, the way you want to work with this. So, yeah, you can, if you want to feel a little more secure, you can add inside a cookie. And, but it's just the same. People can just um, enter and check the token if they want to check it. Okay. <clears throat> so, there's no. Um, we can try to hide it, but if someone wants to look at it, it will do whatever it takes to look at it. So that's just something that happens. So yeah. And okay, let me just let me just go to the um we can see if I can finish this thing to the views. So inside the views, I'm going to check the layout. Do I have something in the layout? Mm. I have an else. I can see an else. Where is the if? Oh, okay, so the if token is equal to that, 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 then that is not changing, right? No, that is not changing because I'm missing something and I can't remember what I'm missing. Um, I had a flash in my head, but it just went away pretty quickly. I try to remember what the hell I did. Okay, maybe inside index. Let me. I'm just checking the other the other stuff, guys. Just give me a second. Okay, we have these response locals. Let me just check the index. Yep. So let me just say response locals. Let me just uh, get this. So, um, yeah, this should work actually. Let's refresh. You can see login. I can click login and move there. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Submit. And it changes to my dashboard and log out. If I log out, then we change that to login and register. Okay. So uh, I forgot I had already this response local token. So this is the way. <laughs> this is the way that we are going to um, get the token to work for us in terms of um, making the, lay the layout or the views uh, responsive to whatever we want. So let me just go to, yeah, layout, okay. So we have here, in case um, you don't remember, because I think I copied this stuff and I will show you so you can copy all this, but um, I know it's kind of messy to work with um, book but just uh, bear with me with this so if token equals equals an empty string we're going to render the register and the login if the token is not that it's not an empty string then we're going to um, add to the navigation they create the dashboard and the logout okay so that is essentially what is going on and we're accessing the token not from the um the let me just close this and close this not from our state JSON okay we are not accessing this token okay this is not it we're accessing the token variable from our index JS okay from this response local start token so this will uh, be present inside our views so this is how we can just uh, structure our, um, our template to display or not certain things, okay? And, uh, okay, we have this register, let me just say login. Okay, we don't have that, let me just copy this. Error and success. And where the hell is that? Below the H1, okay. Nope, that is not the correct indentation. Okay, so that should be it. Save it. 
go back here, refresh just in case, and um, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. Submit. Okay, there was an error processing the request, and that's how the how we can just add the um, error handling because this error and this success are coming from our um, our response. Okay. So for example, if you have a React Angular or Vue front end, then this is a, what you're going to send, but in JSON format, okay? So you will do something like response.json, something like this, response.json, and structure the message that you're going to send, okay? So you can also send a status there, okay? If you are going to work with this as a simple or single API with no views or anything, okay, you can do that and you can structure your message. And that is a similar way that you can access your information on, um, on the front end. Okay, so this is pretty similar. That's why I chose to do this with um, not only the API, but to build the application itself. So we can just add a class to this. Just look at that. Okay. So we can just add, well, it already has a class error to this. Okay. So we can add that. And uh, if you want to add it as color red, bold, um, or italic or something like that, you can do it inside the CSS. Okay. Right now we don't have the CSS, I think, but we we'll we will do that later so you can see how that works and also the JS because we need the JS in order to work uh, for for this navigation okay remember that this is kind of drawer that is sliding in and out so we will need that a uh, custom uh, function JS to make it work so essentially what we did today guys is that let me just go back here <clears throat> Let me just make this smaller, okay? So, we need a login, okay? We already had the render login, which is going to, with is rendering the template, the book template. So we're going to use the um, form, or the form, the function that uh, multi provides us, because now they are um, getting the request instead of the usually um, the request inside the function on not or express so we need to append this function the users uh, upload and check uh, the request that is passing we can also do that with i can't remember the freaking name guys uh, i will check that out and i will tell you in the next video okay uh, what is that other way that we can do this but well, i just wanted to show you that you can do it also with the uploads this is not going to upload anything because there is no file inside that okay we're handling the form data with the user uploads that's why we're adding this so um we're going to await for this model's user that find one which is going to find the user where the email is the same as the email the user is providing us. Okay, if we have the user, I mean, uh, if there is an error with the user, we're going to return a status 500. We're going to re-render the login and return an error so the user can see that. Then if the user is set, we're going to get the value from the form, user request that body password, and the hash from the user that we found using this find one, okay? Then we're going to just use bcrypt to compare those two. If we hash this stuff, it should uh, retrieve us the same hash as the um, hash we have in the database, okay? So we compare those two and a uh, bcrypt is going to do all the heavy lifting there. Then if we have an error, well, I'm not checking for the error specifically, or I can't remember how that freaking word is said. So, sorry, my back, um, excuse my bad English. So, uh, success, we're going to use success. If not success, then we're going to return the status 500, re render the login, and show a different uh, message. Okay. And um, 
if everything went right, then we're going to set the state of our token, of our state inside this application, setting the token, which is this uh, sign token using the email of the user, using this uh, password that should be, not password, but a um, um, secret string that should be in an environment uh, file or variable and setting the expiration of this token and then passing another property inside this storage which is going to be the user values then I'm just um, uploading the post but I don't think we have any post so we will see how this works later so remember that we are including the post for each user that is authenticated inside this um, user stuff. Okay. So we can say user post map in order to map through all the posts that the user has and do something with them. Right now the user is just logging in, so we don't need to do anything, but we will see how this returns. Then we're going to use response with the status 200 and redirect the user to the uh, main route. Okay, so that's essentially what we did. Okay, and we also did the um, authentication uh, logout. So if the user clicks the logout button or link, then we're going to set the state of the token and user to be empty strings so they are not valid anymore. And we're going to just redirect the user to the out login again. Okay, you can redirect to the main route to wherever you feel like. Okay, so um, I think at this moment, um, let me just check one thing, guys. One more thing. This is our controller. We can also re redirect the user to the to the dashboard. I have some hard coded code or strings here. I don't know why, but okay, I will see. Mm -mm -mm. Well, I think that's it, guys. Um, yeah, I tried to make this a little faster, but uh, I tried to also explain what we were doing. So I think that's all, guys, for this video. I will, uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to record later today or this week. I'm also, uh, I'm planning to, I have a webcam, you know, I'm planning to buy another one because the cable for this one is too short and I just want to get a new one, a better one. And maybe I can start recording my freaking face Although I don't see why we would need that, but maybe if you want to know how I look and, you know, I think that that's why people do that. So you can see um, who I am and how I look and we can just continue with this coding and stuff as long as we can. Okay. So yeah, I'm planning to get a new camera. So maybe the next month i'm i'm not sure how this project is going to end so we i will see how that ends too so but yeah i'm kind of in a rough spot right now so that's why i wanted to just do something with the channel to record a new video and stuff like that so I have a ton of work that I need to focus um, on. So that's why we don't have too many videos in the channel anymore. But uh, just bear with me, guys. The channel is still active. It's still alive. So I try to record once in a while when I have the chance, when I feel like. And yeah, so we are... The next stuff that we're going to do inside this Node.js project is the the posts, I think, because we already have the token and we will need to validate that later, of course, but um, we should be fine to start with the posts. So I think that we'll be doing 
that next so that's all for right now guys thank you subscribe to your channel if you want to subscribe if you like the the content give it a like and if you don't like just say why you don't like that and dislike it if you want so you know you are free to do whatever you want so let's see you in the next one